If you've ever watched a Disney movie involving some kind of princess who lives happily ever after with her Prince Charming, you know that there's a lot of mythology around finding the one. And oh my God, there's so much pressure from our families, the media, our cultures, and old religious stuff, and even ourselves. So much emphasis on trying to find this one outside of you who will make you happy forever and ever. In this episode, we discuss who this one really is, what to watch out for in your search, and how to have the love that you're seeking. And after the discussion, we get to the most important part. The group frequency calibration associated with this episode is where the frequency work happens and where change actually occurs. So be sure to listen to that. Without releasing distortion patterns targeted by the GFC, the change you want will be more difficult to attain because you haven't addressed the root of the issue. If you know someone this will help, please share this video with them. And when you're on YouTube, would you please hit the like button and leave a comment if you have something to share so we can reach and help a wider audience. My name is Karen Chong, and in this episode of Mastering Your World Through Frequencies, we're discussing Happily Ever After, The Myth of the One. The title of this episode is The One. Mm -hmm. Are we going to begin into a discussion about the romantic one? Mm -hmm. Or are we in a discussion about any one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think there's this whole myth in our culture about when we're finally with the one, which is outside of ourselves, yeah. and it's usually an intimate partner. Yeah. Then finally we're going to be gloriously happy. You know, like angels will appear and like rainbows and unicorns and hummingbirds that float by and all that sort of stuff. Just like the fairy tales. Just like the fairy tales, mm -hmm. happily ever after. Yeah. And the thing that I'd like to underscore for all of you who are looking for the one, whether you're in relationship already or looking for one, is that the one is really about you. It's about falling in love with you. And I know there's, that's kind of disappointing because you're like, well, if I could just fall in love with someone else, then I'd be happy because it's so in our culture. Yeah. But really, the, the, the funny and ironic and probably frustrating thing for some people is that when you fall in love with yourself, or even if you can't fall in love with yourself, content with, happy with yourself, at peace with yourself, at ease. Any of those things would be wonderful. When that happens, it's odd because that's when you don't need the one outside of you to completely complete you. And oddly, that's when they show up. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. that could be the end of the episode. <laughs> really? <You know? laughs> but I can kind of hear something in, in the people that are watching it. Yeah. I think. Uh -huh. Falling in love, though. Yeah. Is a beautiful experience. Absolutely. And it's easy, I think, in that moment of falling in love mm -hmm. to believe that the one is true, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That there is this one person mm -hmm. that's there for us. Mm -hmm. So how do we, I guess the question would be, if I'm a person that's understood that the one is actually the relationship I have with myself mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. and then if something happens thereafter, it's just an amplification of that mm -hmm. experience yeah. in a beautiful way. Yes. But if I'm not that person and falling in love feels really great yeah. and I haven't quite stabilized the relationship with myself, how, how do I navigate this place of loving falling in love yeah. and being adored and that? In, yeah. in, to the, when it ends, it's horrible, horrible and I'm back to stage one again. Yeah. How do we navigate that? Yeah. You know, I think there are a lot of people who will say, I love love. Yeah. You know, I've heard this a lot. Like, I'm a person who loves love. I love romantic comedies. I love, you know, all these kinds of things because I love love. I think it's a really beautiful thing. And you're right. The falling in love experience is really glorified, mm -hmm. not only in our experience of, like, what we experience ourselves, but also it's, like, glorified in all of our media. Yeah. Okay? And what we're told and then, you know, we're told by our cultures and our religions and our lineages that, you know, finding the one and being together with them forever, that's like what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And right? then you have children. And then you 
Pug rate. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're supposed to. And right. you never have any hardships. <laughs> Raising <laughs> babies and lack of sleep. And yeah, exactly. Never. <laughs> never. But I think the thing that I notice most when I work with people is that a lot of people who have this addiction to that falling in love, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it is an addiction. Yeah. And it's also a fear. And the fear is to be with self. It's like they have a really hard yeah. time there's a lot of distortion there about really like being with themselves because it means that they're not adored, that they're not loved, that they're not worthy, that they're, they, they can't have those things and they need someone else to validate that. So being alone is totally terrifying because what if you do look at yourself and you really aren't worthy mm -hmm. and you are like just like this pile of crap that no one could ever love, including mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. So there is this kind of strange thing that happens with... Um, this set of distortion patterns and also this addictive pattern that comes in where it's this kind of thing that happens where it actually prevents you from getting to the source of the happiness in a relationship, which is to become at peace with, happy with, content with, or even in love with yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I, I think as well, like part of the addiction can be that because you haven't made peace with the stuff inside. Exactly. You're looking for that outward yeah seduction yes. shall we call it yeah and right? it feels really good um, yeah right i mean and there is a chemical change happens Absolutely. inside the body you know? yeah so i guess then what are we telling people what are we saying to them okay if you really want because you can have it there Absolutely. Are, there are people in relationships where they really are in a loving yeah. supportive growing yeah. relationship yeah Soul connected. Soul connected with the same purpose, whatever. Yeah. Right? It can be that. Absolutely. How do they get there? Because this phrase, love yourself, I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> it's not that bloody easy. No. It's not, right? It's not. It's not. And it's said as if it should be easy. Oh, yeah. Just love yourself. Yeah. <laughs> if it was that easy, I would have done it by That's now. Not, exactly. So how? How do we do that? Mm -hmm. you know, do you have tips? Do you have a process that yeah. you can share? So the fastest thing to that, I think, is to first take a look at yourself and see how you really feel about yourself, mm. which is actually really hard for people. So I understand this is a big first black belt step Yeah, to be like, actually, I'm not super OK with myself. Mm. Like, I feel lonely. I feel disconnected. I desire to be with somebody because then I won't feel so alone. Mm. The funny thing is a lot of people when they don't have love for self, they feel outside of. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not accepted by, like, I feel outside of this community. I don't really have a group of friends. Or even if I do have a group of friends, I feel like I float on the outside. Or, yeah. you know, I don't really belong. And do, would they have kind of scripts running in their head? Just so that people can understand if they are this type of person. Yeah. I don't feel included. Yes. I don't feel noticed. Yes. Are they the, is yes. that the kind of thoughts that are exactly. running through their head? Yeah, uh, exactly. Nobody wants to invite me. Mm. I'm always invited last. Yes. I'm an afterthought. You know, whatever it is, they're only inviting me because, um, you know, they have to. And then to notice that you have these feelings of that the fear of not being included, mm -hmm. of not being worthy, of not belonging. of And it's not like you're supposed to solve those things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's to notice within yourself. And it's not like you're publishing it to anybody. This mm. is for you. So even if you just take 10 minutes and you free write, what is it about yourself that you're afraid of people seeing? Yeah. And it's not so that you put it down and you're like, that's who I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's more like, holy crap, that's who I think I am. Yes, yeah. To give you distance from it. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, so in a way, you're getting to see the distorted thoughts. Exactly. That are running through your being, really. Yes. It's not just in your head, yes. is it? Yes, yes. Because ultimately, with these, these type of thoughts, they attract something that reconfirms the thought. Yes. Right? So it's in every yes. cell of your being yeah. that you're running that yeah. frequency. Exactly. And so... The, the thing to do, so after you've written the 10 minutes of stuff, yeah. and then I'm going to get to your point that you just raised because I think it's a really important one, is to put it aside for a little bit mm -hmm. and then read it as if like, your friend were saying this to you, mm -hmm. like the, your, your best friend. Now, if she said this about herself, what would your response be to her? Mm. 
right? What would your response be to her? Yeah. Because it's funny, when we think it in our own heads, it's like normal, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like just what we they say to ourselves all the time. But if you, if you heard those same thoughts, like vocalized by somebody you really love and admire and respect and trust and all those wonderful things, you'd be like, those are freaking horrible things that you're telling to yourself and yeah. they're not true. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like you need that distance. Yeah. So I think that exercise is really valuable to do the 10 minute thing first and then to like read it as if you were hearing it or read it on a recording and listening to it, like into your phone or whatever and listening to it as if your friend were saying that to her, about herself to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be really helpful. And then as to your point, with regards to, if you have these thoughts running through you, I just wanna make it really clear, they are the embodied symptom of a distortion pattern. Mm -hmm. I know people are like, Neh. So you have these things called distortion patterns running through you, mm -hmm. okay? And they create your thoughts and your emotions and they create your reality. I know it's kind of a weird thing for some people to think about, but that's what happens. Yeah. But the wonderful thing is um, that you can change that. So yeah. I'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But if you don't change it, what happens is those distortions are running through your field. So they are like a broadcast signal, yeah. like a radio signal being like, hey there, here's who I am. And then somebody else is going to pick up on it who's like, that's who you think you are? Great. I'll be sure that to confirm that to you yeah. and treat you in the way that your frequencies are running. Yes, because I have a complementary resonance that yes. needs that frequency yes, exactly. to exist. Exactly. Yeah. It's like two magnets coming yeah. together to validate and confirm each other. Mm -hmm. So I say this because not to scare people, but to understand what it is that happens when you have distortion patterns that are running that are unresolved. And you're like, why am I with the same guy over yeah. and over again or the same kind of woman over and over again? Mm -hmm. That's why, it's because these distortion patterns and they're the same ones that form the thoughts and emotions that are running in your head. Yeah. So it's important to release them, not only to change who it is that you're attracted to and who's attracted to you, but so that you feel different and yeah. that you have different thoughts and different emotions. And that's really what it is about because back to our original point, which is it has to do with acceptance of self. Yeah, you know? how much do you value, yeah. right? And who you are. Exactly. And and can you can you find more value Yes. in who you are? Exactly. Right, because you can, you can yes, always find yeah, more value. value. Exactly. Yeah. And then the, the amazing thing is that if you do this exercise, that little simple 10 minute exercise, yeah. if you have distance from it, like I said, by listening to it, you can always be like, whoa, holy crap. Like, mm -hmm. I really don't feel like I'm worthy of being loved. That's right. crazy. Right. So then what do we do? So then you can find the GFC or group frequency calibration to release that distortion mm -hmm. because that's the fastest way to do it. Yeah. You know, and when you listen to a GFC, it sounds like you're just meditating and you're not doing much. But it's amazing to me how much people, it's so subtle and sometimes like people don't recognize that they're having different thoughts and emotions until something, you know, big happens in their world, you know, yeah. and then they're like, oh, my God, I have all the like, I've totally changed. You yes. know, it's kind of a funny thing yeah. how life works. But when you start doing this, you start to come to a place where you are changing what it is that you're broadcasting, not only to others outside of you, but within yourself. Yes. Yeah. And I think what I noticed on the journey is once that first step was initiated, mm -hmm. And I spent the time to just stay in it, you know, to mm -hmm. stay with it and work through it. It made the next one easier. Yeah. I was more comfortable looking. Yes. You know, it became more ease, with more ease I could look mm -hmm. and it became easier to accept, okay, I'm running this. I can't keep denying this. Yeah. Okay, now what? I'm going to move on to the next one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it, it gained momentum. Yeah. To yeah. be able to get to that place, I think is critical. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Yep. And I think the other thing too that's important to do is not only the, do the GFCs change everything on that, that, that frequency level, and as you said, they get easier the more you do it, you know, mm -hmm. because then you're more at ease seeing things about yourself. Yes. It's not like, oh my God, I'm this terrible, horrible, weak, disgusting human. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I'm human. Yeah. And okay, and I have the power to release this stuff. That's freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. That means I can change who I am and what my life looks like and all that stuff. And I think it's really helpful to come up with a little language pattern. This is my like third tip. Yep. So my third tip would be to use the following language pattern of I don't do blank. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people will say like, I can't deal with drama or I can't eat sugar or I can't, um, I don't know, whatever the thing is. But when you say I can't, mm. it's like you're not allowed to. Yes. And it's not super effective because it's like you're denying yourself. Mm -hmm. 
But they found that if you use the words, I don't, it actually is an identity thing. And you're eight times more likely to not experience whatever it is that you're trying, you're, I don't, I'm, you're saying I don't do. So for example, mm -hmm. I don't do drama in a relationship. Yeah. I the don't, end, full the stop. End, full stop. Yeah. Yeah. I don't tolerate people pushing through my boundaries. See, when you say it, you can feel the difference. It's yeah. like, can't is kind of like, I'm a victim. Yes, exactly. Don't is, uh-uh, there's the boundary. Exactly. Don't cross it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it's a wonderful self-empowerment tool. It's like, I just don't allow that mm -hmm. in my reality. And the wonderful thing about that is it confirms something that already exists that you may not know, which is that you are co-creating your reality yeah. all the time, whether you're doing it consciously or unconsciously. Mm -hmm. And when you say, I don't do this, it's like, I do not allow this in my reality. I don't. Mm -hmm. That means that you also will shift yourself to make sure that what you've just stated, I don't, doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Okay, so we have that... It's kind of like journal, I suppose, yeah, right? Yeah, free writing. You know. Free writing, okay, free writing, but from the perspective of you write it, but you hear it mm -hmm. as if it's coming from somebody close and dear to you. Yeah, exactly. And then we watch our language around how we set boundaries, I guess, mm -hmm. or uh, express who we are mm -hmm. or what we will and won't accept. Exactly. Okay, so this is just getting us to the stage of um, understanding who we are. Yes, Right. Now, this is us working on us. Yes. What is the result of that? So, the one, is there such a thing? Let's go back to the title. Is there yeah. such a thing? Yeah. So, from my perspective, you are the one. So, there are many ones who are other people who you could have a wonderful experience with. And the thing is, there are some people... Okay, so, I'm going to address one thing because people are like, what about my twin flame? <laughs> so... It, get twin flame, this idea of the twin flame is kind of interesting because it often is used to justify poor behavior, mm. you know, on the other party. It's <laughs> like, I'm going to allow that because he or she is my twin flame. Okay, let me just make this really super clear. If the twin flame thing existed, which it doesn't, if it existed, if they were truly your other half of your flame, they would not do something to diminish you. Yeah. Because why would they put out half of their own freaking flame? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who came up with that idea? I, I don't know, but it's really popular yeah. as an idea, which is, by the way, a distortion of this idea of the one, uh -huh. which, by the way, is a way of always making you less than. It's, yes. It's, it's an interesting thing through our cultures and our lineages and our religions that if you're always seeking the one, it means you yourself are insufficient. Mm -hmm, not good enough. Not good enough. Mm -hmm. Because, well, I mean, clearly you need someone else to make you feel loved and happy and all those things. And that you can only experience love with another? Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but the thing, and it's so funny, it's very fundamentally disempowering. Yeah. So from my perspective, given that whole little rant, <laughs> <laughs> I would say the one is yourself and your connection to pure source. Mm. And there are many people who you could be in relationship with and grow with, mm. who can make you happy. Yep. There are some people you meet, and it does happen, where there is the soul connection. Like, I recognize you. You yeah. recognize me. I just want to preface this by saying everyone thinks soul connection means good. Yeah. <laughs> Cue the harps. Yeah. Exactly. Harps and angels. <laughs> it doesn't always. Mm -mm. You can have a soul connection with someone, meaning that you've known each other over other lifetimes, yeah. have had relationship, and it's really in this lifetime that you resolve having relationship <laughs> with them because they are not a good match. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I've so, experienced that. Yeah, I have too. And it's not necessarily just with intimate partners. No, it's no. been with friends. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? People who are close to you. And you're like, oh, okay. Now we're going to resolve this in this lifetime. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> I came back this time to finish all this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So let's come back to like tips and ideas and recognition mm -hmm. tools, shall we yeah. say. Because yeah. I know there's a lot of people out there are still hanging on to the idea that there is the one. And, and they're probably listening to this guy. You ladies don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. You know? I have found them. I found my twin flame or I have found the one even though he beats me up and even yeah. though I feel like shit. You know, what, yes. Oh, can I say that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can, I think. <laughs> um, but he is the one because I had this connection. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, or here's another one. 
Here's another one I hear a lot. I'm growing, my life is changing, I'm doing frequency work, it's amazing. I can't believe how my life is expanding, but in this one area, I'm not. Okay, so, right, let's just unpack that because my instant reaction to that is, well, is it really growing? Yeah. If that one area isn't, because it's not selective. Growth yes. is inside and it, it comes outside. Yes. You know. So is it really growing or is this just an idea that you think it is? You mean, um, yeah. you know, you know where think, I'm going with yes. this? Yeah. My feeling is it depends what the person chooses to do with that information. Right. So it may be that they had too much distortion before and they couldn't see that there's this one area here uh, that's always just like, bleh, right. right? So everything in their life is changing. Like, whoa, this is amazing. Mm. Right. But in this one area, because they have so much identity and fear and like whatever's happening in that relationship is happening and they feel they don't want to abandon the person and they feel guilt and they feel, you know, whatever yeah. they're feeling, mm -hmm. yeah, that now all of a sudden they can see it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Sometimes you have to, in the places that we have the most like heavy distortion or yes. the most fear or the most whatever the thing is, yeah, the most stickiness, sometimes what happens, not all the time, but sometimes what happens is as you do frequency work and everything else tries to change around you, all yeah. of a sudden you have the space, you can't get away from it. You're like, oh, yeah. there's this thing. That I didn't see before, but yeah. I'm seeing now. And I can't help it, and right. boy does it suck. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. And I think I've heard as well that there's a lot of time being invested in that one area. Yes. Yeah. And so it is a bit sticky then because yes. 20, 30, 40 years yeah. with this person, are you going to walk away that easily? Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. What do, what do you do with that? So that's the question that you have to ask yourself is like, what do you, that's like a whole bunch of distortion that you have to work through. Do you have tips on how to work through that? Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, especially for somebody who's self-aware and been doing a lot of personal development work. Yeah. To me, at that point, yeah. like honestly, if this is this is the case, the person's been working diligently on it because you know a lot of people have. It's yeah. not like a, a news flash to them that this is a, a challenge. It's at some point you have to uh, um, start to work on and release these distortion patterns around sacrifice of self, yeah, guilt, not the low self worth of like being fully happy, yeah, you know all that. There's yeah. like you know betrayal. There's a whole bunch of stuff like wrapped mm. up. I'm not saying it's easy, and you can't think your way to it. Mm. It's all a distortion thing, from my perspective. Yeah, because like, I mean, if it's somebody who's been diligent, it's not like they're just sitting on their ass and like not doing anything. Yeah. you know, they're like active, you know, in their self reflection and trying to improve and doing the things and whatever it is that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So this is something where when you start to release your distortions, you may not have the answer right away. So I just want to preface this because people are like, okay, I have to have a plan. Right? Yeah. Like, okay, I, I know my relationship of like 20 something years totally sucks because yeah. I'll say things to them. They're like, I'm like, I know you know that I have said all these words to you and you've known every single one yourself. Mm -hmm. You didn't need me to tell you. And they'll say, yep. And I'll say, okay. So what it happens is when you start to release the distortion pattern around it, it's not like you have to have a plan like, okay, on April 22, I'm going to like break up with him. You know what I mean? It's like that's not, that doesn't have to be the plan. Or I'm not even suggesting you have to break up with the person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, what happens is as your, your distortions clear and your resonance rises and you watch the other person to see if they are pacing with your change at all, mm, okay? Mm. So I'm not suggesting they need to be like, right, like dolphins, right next to you, like, whoa, <laughs> we're totally in sync. My twin flame. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's not about that. It's like, are they shifting? Mm. And even though I'm feeling myself shifting, are they shifting? And it's not a judgment, like no. you suck because you're not shifting. Yeah. You should be shifting with me. It's mm. not like that. It's more like I'm noticing that they don't want to or they can't. Yeah. Right? And that has nothing to do with you. That has to do with their own set of distortions and whether or not they want to grow in this area or at all. Yeah. Some yeah. people aren't growth driven. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, if they're not and you are, mm -hmm. at some point this becomes the distortion pattern of sacrifice of self. Yeah. And I'm not telling you what you should do because I never do. It's up to you. You have free will. It is your journey. You are empowered and an intelligent, highly resonating being. You can make your choices. You don't need me to tell you. Then you're going to choose okay, what do I do here? And it's going to start to grow like a really big mosquito bite. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, because it keeps getting, it will start to bother you. Yeah, because and everything else is expanding and growing. I mean, it's going to be like the little, laying the cactus needle in your foot. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's you just bothering. keep it there. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to decide what to do with the cactus needle. And mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting that the only thing you can do 
is break up with the person. Yeah. And for some people, the only thing you can do is break up with the person. You what know, other things can they do though? So the other thing that I would suggest that you do is actually go away for a little bit. Mm. So meaning if you can, not to like, not to distract yourself from the person, mm. but just to be in your own rhythm. Does that make sense? It's not out of like anger or vitriol no. or like, I hate you, I'm trying to get away from you. It's like, okay, this is really heavy for me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go away for some period of time, wherever it is, and I'm just going to be in my own rhythm, mm -hmm. okay? I'm not looking to have a fling with anyone else. No. I'm not looking to do anything. I'm just here in my own rhythm in a different space that's mine, okay? Yeah. So you take yourself off to an Airbnb or whatever it is, okay? Yeah. Somewhere, okay? Time out for yourself. Yeah, time out for yourself. And then you go back and you feel the difference between the you in your own rhythm mm -hmm. and then you in that space. Yeah. And then make a choice. Okay. You know, so yeah. that's that's one thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so anything else? Because I was going to say, what is there something you can do with the person that's not sacrificial? Yes, I would suggest asking them if they can or want to meet you. Right. So be honest mm -hmm. and have that conversation. Yeah. That might feel impossible and hard, but have, have it. it. Yeah. And. They may try to wiggle out of it. Yeah. They may not be truthful, but you'll know all those things in that response. And mm. that actually will tell you a lot. So I feel like just being direct, mm. even though it's going to scare the crap out of you. Mm. I'm just telling you right now. It's not like an easy conversation. You're like, yeah, I'm just going to have that conversation because <laughs> that's going to be easy tonight. <laughs> mm. I mean, if it was that easy, you would have done, done it, it straight away, right? Exactly. But the fact that you've hung in there and sacrificed yourself a little bit means that it's a hard conversation. To have. But it has to happen, right? Yes. Because like you say, it's not about walking away from the person and blaming them. It's finding out, do you want to do this with me mm -hmm. or, or not? not. Yeah. yeah. And also, I would say when you have that conversation, to not decide in that moment necessarily like we're done. Mm. You might know in that moment, like, yeah, we're done. Yeah. But sometimes people, especially if they haven't been used to introspecting, need a little time mm. to be like, we just had this conversation. I'm just noticing things about myself. Mm -hmm. I've heard what you said. I need to reflect on it. And I'm coming back to you yeah. with a different answer. Yeah. So I would say that's why neutrality is so important. Because mm. it's not like you're blaming the other person. Like, you suck because you haven't provided this to me. Yeah. It's like, hey, I've noticed that we seem to have different trajectories. Yeah. I'm feeling like there's all this growth and expansion. And I'm noticing like you and I seem to be repeating this thing. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm honest to God, I'm not blaming you, but I'm asking you, what is it that is keeping us in the same place? Do you feel like we are in the same place? Do you feel like we're expanding? Are you happy? Like yeah. asking those questions and then be quiet yeah. and listen to listen. them. Yeah, because do they even notice? Exactly. You know, have you, I may have noticed. Did you even notice that yeah. this is happening? Yeah. You know? exactly. Maybe they haven't. Or maybe they have and they've been too scared to say something. Exactly. It's just, okay, so the idea is to, coming back to the title, The One. Mm -hmm. you're, from your opinion, The One is about the relationship inside mm -hmm. with that greater, you have a great phrase, indestructible. Infinite indestructible consciousness. Infinite indestructible consciousness. Yeah, the big S self. Yeah, the yeah. big S self. S self, having that um, understanding and connection that that is innate within mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to get, yeah, to get through all the distortions to reach that point inside yeah. that you finally, even if you don't really appreciate it, but you can acknowledge, oh, I am so much more than my distortions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so right back to the title, that's what we're talking about here. Yes. Okay. And your tips are... Mm -hmm. relate to how to make that mm -hmm. journey. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In intimate partnership. In intimate partnership. Because ultimately, I mean, I mean, having a friend on the journey is much nicer than doing it solo. I Even though so. you could and you could yeah. still have as much fun. Yeah. It's always more fun with somebody else. I right? think so. And it can be harder mm -hmm. because you're, I mean, with, I'll just speak for Chris and myself. Chris calls me on my bullshit all the time. Yeah. He's like, well, you teach this. <laughs> yeah. 
So what's happening over here? <laughs> he's not that rude. He's much nicer about it than I am. Yeah. But like, but it's essentially he's calling me on it. Yeah. You know? And it's and is that necessarily easy for the ego? You're like, mm, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that's what ultimately. I mean, that's the that's what we've chosen, right? Yeah. You know, if growth requires <laughs> yes. truth. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and then the tips that you were you're giving us on. Even just to start right at the beginning, to become aware of where you are not feeling that. Yeah, with yourself, yeah. With yourself first, let's mm -hmm. start there, is mm -hmm. about taking that moment to reflect, to take the writing, mm -hmm. to have a look at what these thoughts that are running. Mm -hmm. The patterns, actually, yeah. because it's not just a thought. No. It, it's a... I mean, it even affects your body language. Yeah. You know. Your thoughts, your emotions, what your body expresses are simply a symptom signals of the distortion. And signals yeah. all the time. Yes. Signals, right? Yes. That's why you're with that same type of guy. Over and over again. And it'll be that way until you stop and say, well, wait, yes. hang on. And, and it that, can't keep being their fault. Exactly. Right? And the amazing thing is you can change it. Mm -hmm. That's the wonderful, yes. amazing, awesome thing. And, you know, I feel like if you are one of those people who are in relationship right now and you've been in for like 7, 10, 20, 30 mm. years and you're like, oh my God, I feel like I'm dying. Mm. Or you're not even that long, you're just mm -hmm. in a couple of years and you're like, uh oh. When you start to love yourself, you'll be less afraid of the loss. Yeah. And it will be easier, I promise you. Mm -hmm. It will be easier for you to be honest with yourself and be honest with them. Yeah. And you're not, because you've, you know yourself and you accept and are at peace with yourself. I'm not saying you're perfect. No. But just okay with yourself. Yeah, you're okay with your feelings. Exactly. Yeah. So when you, it's like that gives you the knowingness. It doesn't matter what they say because you already know about yourself. Yeah, yeah. nobody can hurt you exactly. more than you. you exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. And, and when, when you come from a place of understanding who you are, even if you can't accept it, but you understand Yes. Right, and you know that you're working on it. Yeah. It doesn't matter after that. Nobody else has that power over you. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I keep coming back to the title. Yes. I know folk are going to be saying, would you just give us some hints and tips? <laughs> 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 so we're going to do the GFCs as well on yes. top of that. Right? Exactly. So the GFC is where the magic happens. That's yeah. where the change happens. Yeah. So after, you know, doing all the little exercises that help us to slow down, take a breath and look at who we really are. Mm hmm you're offering GFCs as well, yeah. which deal with the distortion patterns that are running these horrible thoughts, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and in your GFC, it's at frequency level, right? Yeah, so it's at frequency level. So instead of like, you know how there's this popular idea of like getting sticky notes and like putting them on your, your mirror, bathroom mirror or like mm -hmm. writing on your bathroom mirror, all these affirmations like, I love me, mm -hmm. I am beautiful, I am strong, I am whatever powerful. Yeah. But the thing is, when you tell yourself those affirmations and you don't believe them, you feel like it's a lie. Yeah. So I don't care, yes, there's neuroplasticity and I get repetition helps, but if you fundamentally feel like it's a lie, mm. from a frequency level, you're gonna reject it and it's gonna amplify the distortion. I was just gonna say, it makes you feel worse. It makes you feel worse. Yeah, because you can't even believe that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're like, oh my God, I'm such a loser because mm -hmm. I'm not this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the nice thing about um, group frequency calibrations is you don't have to believe a damn thing. Mm -hmm. It just releases the distortion patterns. And then what will happen is that you start to feel different and think differently and everything starts to shift like we just mentioned before. And yeah. you're, what you're broadcasting to others and to yourself totally changes. So the take home, I think, the main take home from this, from what I'm hearing when you're mm -hmm. talking, is that to take a moment and look at what you're broadcasting. Yes. I think that's a major take home that you were really, you know, discussing deeply with us there is take that time, mm -hmm. look at what you are broadcasting, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and then do the work. Yeah, because through that you can change what you're broadcasting, mm -hmm. who you're going to be attracted to and who's attracted to you is totally going to be different. Mm -hmm. And how you feel about yourself during I'm the whole process. Say that. That's the thing that's the most amazing part. Totally changes. That's the one. Yes, and exactly. How you feel about you. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Okay, right. Let's get on with the GFC. <laughs> cool. And for those of you who would like to have more love for yourself, I highly recommend listening to the group frequency calibration associated with this episode. And for those of you 
who have somebody you know who could really use help with this area in their life, please share this video with them. We're about to start the group frequency calibration, or GFC, where we actually do the frequency work and where change is catalyzed. To get to the GFC, click on the square that'll appear to the right or the link in the description below. It's time to bring in a new experience, a new consciousness, and a new world. Let's rise together.